know, James wrote, uh, I believe it's in the third chapter, he says, the wisdom from above is first pure, then it's peaceful, peaceable, and then easy to be entreated, full of good works, and the fruits of righteousness are sown in peace by those who make peace. You know, and it is amazing that people think that that means to to peace means being nice to someone and I'm and that is really hard to be put into words but you know speaking the love of the truth maybe speaking something that someone does not want to hear and they may not be peaceable towards it but you can speak the truth in love you know and let me let me give an example when John in his first letter he says if someone comes to you with another gospel other than the gospel that we have given to you he says do not receive them in the house nor greet them the king james renders it to uh to say god speed but the greek just means to greet to say hail and so you know if we're if we're speaking the truth of the gospel let's just talk about baptism you know um if someone is preaching a lie and saying that you don't have to be baptized because Romans 8.10 is clear that if Christ be in us, the body is dead because of sin and there is only one way that we put the body to death and that's through the faith that we believe God raised Jesus from the dead and we're baptized into Jesus Christ and into his death. Uh, Romans 6, 3 and 4, uh, Colossians chapter 2, uh, 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 21 and 22. Uh, you know, Mark 15, verse 15 and 16, he says, Go into all the world and preach the gospel of the kingdom to every creature, and he who believes and is baptized shall be saved. He who believes not shall be damned. You know, and somehow it, it has gotten off track that that you don't have to be baptized. But you know, speaking, being, sowing the fruits of righteousness and peace, and making peace doesn't have anything to do with saying have a nice day god bless you to someone you know is spreading lies leading people astray telling them they don't have to be baptized into jesus christ and into his death to know him and to have because that is to have eternal life for for to for him to dwell in us that is to know him and jesus said in john chapter 17 verse 3 and this is life eternal that they might know you, the one true God and Jesus whom you sent. This is to know him. He says, uh, 1 Corinthians six seventeen. he says, but the one who is joined to the Lord is one spirit. We're married to him. We, you know, that's why he's talking about being dead to the law by, through the body of Christ. In Romans chapter seven, verse four, he says, He's the first three verses, he's talking about how the law has power over a person as long as they live. And that's what he's talking about in Romans 3.20, for no flesh shall be justified or made righteous by the works of the law, for by the law is the knowledge or full discernment of sin. That's what he's describing here in chapter 7, for I'd not known sin but by the commandment. You know, uh, so, and the law is sin strength, 1 Corinthians fifteen fifty six. But we see in verse 4 of chapter 7 of Romans, he says, 
consider yourself dead to the law by the body of Christ, that you should be married to another, even to him who is risen from the dead. And this, this is the mystery of the gospel. Christ in you, the hope of glory, ourselves dead and him living in us. That's why Paul was declaring in Romans chapter 10, you know, what saith that the faith that we're proclaiming to you, that if you will believe that God raised him from the dead and confess him as Lord, you shall be saved. That's what Jesus was talking about. He says, why call you me Lord and don't do the things that I say? And, and, Matthew chapter 7, it says, directly after the days of the tribulation, when Jesus will come, and he said, many shall say to him in that day, Lord, Lord, and this is what he said, depart from me, I never knew you. He said, I never knew you. Not that, that he had once knew them and they had fallen away. He said he never knew them. You know, this isn't, this isn't about... Uh, a heretic who has known the Lord and got defiled because he's living outside of faith. That's what he's talking about, continuing to sin because he's self-condemned. You know, so to know him, to know him, And you know, sowing the, the fruits of righteousness and peace have nothing to do with being nice, saying, oh, God bless you, have a nice day, when they ignore what you're saying and be a partaker. John says you're being a partaker of their sins. If they are proclaiming a different gospel and you say, and, and you're trying to be nice and thinking that that is what you're supposed to do when really you're just making yourself a partaker of their evil deeds. That's what John said. You know, as Paul told Timothy in 1 Timothy, he says, keep yourself pure. Don't lay hands suddenly on no one. Don't be a partaker of other people's uh, sins. You know, keep yourself pure. You know, because... Don't let laying on of hands be the first thing. Those that are led by the Spirit of God are the ones born of God. You know, it is, we need to understand. We need to understand so that we can keep ourselves in Him and walk in the liberty wherein He has made us free. But if we make ourselves partakers of someone else by the words of our mouth saying, God bless you, have a nice day to someone that we know is not proclaiming the truth of the gospel, and we've removed ourselves from the favor of God. If the power of his grace is not active in our life to make us walk in victory over sin because I tell you the only way the only way that we enter life is by putting the body to death as he said in Romans 8 10 of Christ being you the body is dead because of sin and our spirit is alive because of righteousness and there's only one way that we put our body to death and that is through having faith that God raised Jesus from the dead and confess him Lord and we are baptized into Jesus Christ and into his death, not a trinity. There is one name given under heaven whereby we must be saved. And Peter proclaimed that in Acts 4.12 when he was standing before the rulers of the Jews 
being questioned about the lame man that was healed at the gate beautiful in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. He said, if it be a question of names whereby this man stands before you every whit whole, let it be known before you that in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, this man stands before you whole. And scripture says that they seen that John and Peter being unlearned men reprimanded them and let them loose because there was evidently a notable miracle taking place. So, man, we, I mean, we need to understand to keep ourselves pure. Not whatsoever is not a faith of sin. And faith comes, faith does come by hearing but hearing for faith comes by the word of God. It doesn't come from what someone else is saying, what someone else had done in their life. Jesus said, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask whatsoever you will and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified that you bear much fruit. You know, we get caught up in chasing after the world. John said, he who loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. You know, all that is in the world, the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life are not of the Father, but of this world. And the and the world is passing away with its with its lust, its desires. But he that does the will of God shall abide forever. We we need to have faith that God is going to take care of us as we seek His kingdom and His righteousness first. Jesus said, He said, though all those things shall be added to us. And he makes the promise that if we do hunger and thirst after righteousness, we shall be filled. You know, but so Jesus repeatedly is talking about money and the love of money. Man cannot serve two masters, God and mammoth, God and money. You know, and, and Satan has entered the lie through so many people's mouths and twisted that toward people who are just they're no their their focus isn't on you know growing up in Christ but just what they can get in this world Romans 8 5 and 6 Paul says and he shows us by this how to walk in the spirit because he says those that are after the flesh set the affections of their mind on the things of the flesh the king james renders it mind but the greek word means to set the affections of the mind on and those that are after the spirit set the affections of their mind on the things of the spirit and he says the same thing in colossians chapter 3 the first three verses he says if you be therefore seated with Christ, God with Christ at God's right hand above, he says, seek those things which are above, not the things of, that are below. He says, set the affections of your mind on the things above, and not those things below. He says, for your life is hidden with Christ in God. And we need to understand this. We need to understand this so that we can walk and the liberty that is in Christ. As Peter says, you know, for freedom where you made free, only do not use your liberty as a cloak or a cover for sin because it has been being freed from the law that made us free. We need to understand that. 1 Corinthians 15, 56, the law is sin's strength, but sin is still the sting of death. And we need to understand that Jesus came and took away our sin. Not like the Old Testament sacrifices, which as the writer of Hebrews uh, points out in chapter 9 and 10, 
that those sacrifices were never able to take away sin. For in those sacrifices, there's a remembrance of sin every year. But we got to know that he came to take away our sin. He came to put away sin. And in him is no sin. You know, so don't let anyone lead you astray of the truth. You know, there's no temptation to overtaken you, but that such is a common man. The lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. But God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted above what you are able, but will also, with the temptation, make a way of escape. 1 Corinthians 10.13 and even Paul in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, he says, I don't fight as one uncertainly as one who beats against the air, but I buffet my body and bring it under, make it my slave, lest after having preached to others, I myself should become a castaway, a reprobate. As he said in 2 Corinthians 13, 5, examine yourself whether you be on the faith. Know you not your own self? How that Christ be in you, except you be re reprobates, rejects. You know, so, I mean, we just need to, life and death are in the power of the tongue, Proverbs 18, 21. And those that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. You know, we can't just, we, we got to put a watch over our mouth, you know, Sowing the, sowing the fruits of righteousness and peace does not mean speaking out God bless you to everyone. Being nice, being nice in, in our terms of the word today is not fulfilling what James is talking about. I mean, we just really need to, it's hard to put that into words, but people need to come to an understanding of that so that they can keep themselves pure. I mean, people ignore certain parts of scripture because they are really hard. You know, because it is not a this easy street, you know. Paul describes it in Philippians chapter 3, you know. I, I, I conform myself unto the death of Christ, that, that by if by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. As he says in, uh, <coughs> was it 2 Corinthians when he's talking about let me go there real quick because man there's really uh, Second Corinthians chapter 5 he says for we, for we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle talking about our flesh, flesh body were dissolved we have a building of God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this we groan earnestly, desiring to be clothed upon with our house, which is from heaven. And that's where he's talking about in 1 Corinthians 15 of this corruptible being, you know, uh, putting on incorruption, you know, and this mortal being swallowed up of life. He says, if so being clothed, we shall not be found naked. Well, we really need to come to an understanding of that. If so being clothed, we are not found naked. As he said in 1 Corinthians 15, 36, the body we sow is not given life unless it dies. And also in that same chapter, he says, do not be deceived because corruption does not inherit incorruption. This corruptible shall put on incorruptible 
but we have to understand what he's talking about. Corruption doesn't inherit incorruption. You reap what you sow. If the body we sow is, does not die daily through the faith of Christ living in us, making him Lord over everything, it is not given life. And we enter that through the faith of baptism. I mean, and oh, we need to understand that. So I'm going to end it there. But we need to keep ourselves in Christ.